Now that we've built our first design, which is this basic design, which produced this very simple output, what we're going to do is we're going to modify this now. One of the things to add to it is we're going to look and add an image to it. Most web pages are made up from uh, text and media. So here, let's go have a look here at black abstract and see what we get. Let's spell the word abstract. Okay, let's take let's take this image and we'll insert. All right. So once this is downloaded, this is the image we're going to deal with. Notice how I'm collecting this out of PowerPoint. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use this image basically in the background of this particular site. So I'm going to right click this guy to start off with and I'm going to save it. Now from here, I'm going to navigate into my website, which is my test folder. Then I'm going to go new folder and I'm going to call this guy images. And inside it, we'll call this guy background. Notice it's a JPEG file, so let's save that like that. Now from here, I'll minimize this. We'll go back into VS Code. All right, so we did this in the last one. As you can see now, there's a brand new images folder with our background here. So one of the things we want to do is we're going to tidy up these colors, right? We don't want these colors all over the place. Now, when it comes to putting styles on, which is what this was, this was putting styles onto our HTML, we can put more than just basic colors. We can actually link up an image. But we also don't want to just keep everything with these colors. So the first thing we're going to do now is we're going to come in, and we're basically going to delete the background color of each box. Now, the reason we can do that is because we already know that all of the boxes sit where we want them to sit. So we just take them all out. Let's get rid of this piece of text here as well. So we'll just delete that as well. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put our background image onto our wrapper. So, when we're doing our CSS, we can keep it in one line or we can do multi lines. Let's go into multi line here. Now, from here, I can go background image and I'm going to go URL. And inside here, put in the single quotes. Now, remember, this image is inside a folder called images. So we have to tell the system we're going from the root folder into the images folder to find this image. So we get images slash background.jpg. Now, if we save that, make sure you've got your server up and running. This down here tells you to close it. I've still got it open. As you can see, this is now what it looks like. So this image is quite large. So let's give it some, some different changes. So we'll change the position so it sits in the center. We'll give it a background size. So we will contain it. I'll do a control S, alt tab. Okay, so let's try cover instead of contain. That looks better, okay? Now from here, we also wanna make sure it doesn't move. And we can do that by putting in background attachment and fixed. This means that if we put in more content than what the wrapper has, it will basically, the image won't move. And we can still move things. Now, from here, we have a lot of stuff going on. So what we're going to do is we're gonna put some text into our CTA, but we're not gonna just put in normal text, okay? So if we put in some dummy text now, like so, I'll save it, I'll turn back. It's there, but you can only see it because I highlighted it. So we don't want this to be the default positioning, okay? And our text is reasonably small as well. So let's come back into here. So in our CTA, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put in a text box. So your text box. So whenever you're doing stuff, always do your best to put it into a box and make sure you know what's gonna happen. Now from here, what we're gonna do 
is we're going to put our text box on the right hand side and we're going to give it a header so we'll put in a, a h1 this means it's the biggest header it's got and then we'll put a p tag lorem ipsum text in like that and here we will say header now once again i just did a Control s to save it like an alt tab you can see it's still there it's still black so let's play around with this text box so dot text box brace let's give it a width of about 30 bw so that means it's effectively 30 percent of the width we'll give it a height of um let's just give it 30 as well so we'll make a little box vh give it a background color of white so that means we're going to see our black text and then here's the thing that's different is we're going to add a float to it now when we're floating stuff we can float to the left and we can float to the right when we float stuff one of the things with div boxes let me go into here and show you one of the things with div boxes, so if we draw out a new div box, oh, works better if you click on it. If we draw it out, what happens is the system says as soon as we get to the end of this, the very next div box that we draw must appear underneath it. Okay. Now, when we put float left on it, this is going to get rid of that. So the next box will stick like this. So this is one way of getting elements like that. Now, normally we would just do float left, but because we're not doing one that's sitting here and then sticking one here, we're basically putting one over here. We have nothing here. We're telling this box, I want you to sit as far over to the right as possible. And then we can see our text. So let's see, we've got a width, we've got a height, we've got a background color, and we've given it a float. So we'll save and we will Alt tab and as you can see here now we can see our box notice here with the text the header it's bold and it automatically put in a line break this is part of the h series the header tags we have h1 h2 h3 h4 h5 and h6 going from largest to smaller in that order our text comes with the default font type of our system but notice how everything is flush up against the edges not something we want to do so we can actually manipulate that as well so if we alt tab back to our code what we're going to do is we're going to move this to start with so i'm going to click out of here we're now going to put this into an external style sheet so i'm going to create a new folder called css and a new file called style.css and in here we're going to basically take a copy of all of this so no control X and a style control V control S control S now our system our page here I should say not system no longer sees that those styles so to fix it we have to link it so we link CSS and in here we say inside the CSS folder look for style.css now to modify our text here we're going to go dot text box. Okay, so we're looking for this in our list of code, and then we're going to look at the H1 first. So we do a H1. This is called nesting styles, but in our curly braces. So let's give it a, a padding of 1 EM. Now, an EM is a unit of measurement which we can use around text and so forth. It's approximately 16 pixels. So whenever you're coding stuff up, you want to stick with VW, VH, and EM as your units. So if I save that now, Alt tab, um, back to the page. Okay, our text has moved here, but notice our background image has disappeared. This is because we've put the styles into a subfolder. When it comes to here and it's reading these images, the images aren't coming off CSS. We've got to go back from the CSS folder 
to the root folder, then in images, and then we'll find it. To go backwards in a folder, you put in dot dot slash. Okay. So then the system says, I've got to go back to the root folder, look for the images folder, then I'll find the background image. If I save it, I'll tab. Now we have our image popping up. Let's add some more styles to that text. So come back to our index page. We'll go dot text box. Here we're picking on the P tag. Okay, so notice now with CSS, you can ping it out using the class and the keywords. So inside here, let's do this. Let's go line height, 1.5 EM. And then we'll go font size. Notice there's an awful lot of things there. We just have to worry about some of the simple ones. And we'll say this is 1.2 EM. And then we'll put in some padding. And here we'll give it a point uh, 0 0.2 EM. Let's save that. Alt tab. As you can see now, it's not flush up against the text. There's a bit more spacing around it. And this is how we can start situating content. If we wanted to do this again, what we can do is we can take a copy of this, paste it here, and we'll call this guy text box two. Now, the thing about this is the styles we've put onto this one will no longer apply to this, which means it won't apply for that or that. So to make text box two, we'll do a save, come into here, copy, paste, and let's change this to a float left, save, and put the number two in there as well. Okay, so now let's alt tab back to the page. See how now these are on the same thing? This is because there's nothing telling it to go to the next line. So we want to break that a little bit. So what we can do, let's get rid of our float. Let's try this command, clear both. Semicolon at the end, and there we go. So what that does is it takes off, well, it reinstigates the line break. And then notice here, we have a difference in our text again. So as you can see, right now, what you've seen is you've seen how to put text in, a couple of commands to control text, how to nest styles, how to create an external style sheet and link it up using the link command here. And of course, continue to maintain a decent file and folder structure. In the next one, we'll add additional pages to the site.